I want you to close your eyes. Think back on today. Think back on yesterday. Think back on all the days that you remember. Look back on your memories. The good, the bad, and all the experiences that shaped you into the person that you are today. Isn't it great to remember? Isn't it great to pretend that you're back in the past? Isn't it great to look back on your memories? Well, what if that's all they were? Memories. What if none of that actually happened, but instead they were just electrical signals that randomly went off in your head and just happened to make sense? What if all your experiences were just random electrical signals that just happened to make sense, and reality itself wasn't real? What if your experience of having a body was a false memory, and you were actually just a brain? Without a body, you would have no sensory organs. All input from the outside world would be reduced to zero. Without a body, your brain, or more accurately, you, would die almost instantly, flickering out of existence in the blink of an eye. Now, what if, all of a sudden, in this moment, right now, you, flickered out of existence just like that. What if you were a Boltzmann brain? A Boltzmann brain is defined as a fully formed brain, complete with the memories of a full human life in our universe that arises due to extremely rare random fluctuations out of a state of thermodynamic equilibrium. You probably didn't understand what I just said, so let me simplify it for you. Here's my explanation of a Boltzmann brain, in as little time as possible. To understand the Boltzmann brain, we first need to understand three concepts. Quantum particles, constant motion, and quantum fluctuations. These are big words, but they're not that complicated. First of all, quantum particles are particles that are smaller than atoms. That's it. They're the stuff that atoms are made from, and all you really need to know is that they are spread throughout the universe. They aren't perfectly evenly distributed like salt in a water, but they are present in some concentrations everywhere in the universe, from the air in front of you right now, to the vacuum of space, to even before the Big Bang. Sometimes they're bonded together to make atoms and matter, and other times they aren't bonded at all and just make a particle soup. Either way, just know that they are essentially everywhere. Next up, we move on to constant motion. If you've taken 8th grade chemistry before, you probably heard that all atoms are in a state of constant random motion, and the speed and rate at which they move is relative to the form of matter that they are in and the temperature. This is the same for particles. Finally, let's talk about quantum fluctuations. This is slightly more complicated. Quantum fluctuations are a process in which matter can arise from nothingness through sheer luck. Remember how I said that all the particles in the universe are in a state of constant random motion? Well, this means that there will always be pockets of high concentration and pockets of low concentration. It's unavoidable due to random chance. And even after the heat death of the universe, these pockets of fluctuating concentrations will still appear and disappear, meaning that the universe will never reach maximum entropy. This random motion means that it's technically possible for all the particles in the universe to drift into one giant clump. This is unbelievably likely, but not technically impossible. Now, what if instead of drifting into one giant messy clump, what if they drifted into something more organized? What if just a handful of particles drifted into the perfect positions for them to form bonds and to create any random atom? Now we're creating matter. See where I'm going? What if even more particles drifted together and formed even more atoms? Now what if those atoms, which are also in a state of constant random motion, happen to come together in the perfect positions to form bonds with each other and create a random object? That's quantum fluctuations. Just a quick fun fact, many scientists believe that an extremely rare instance of quantum fluctuations is what caused the Big Bang. So we have our three concepts out of the way, so understanding what a Boltzmann brain is becomes a lot simpler. Basically, it's just a human brain that was created through quantum fluctuations. There's a bit more though. This brain wasn't created as a blank slate. It's fully equipped with memories of living on Earth as a normal human being. It's as if the brain of someone living on Earth right now, including all their memories, just happened to be spontaneously created through quantum fluctuations. Now, this is just a brain, so no other body parts, and although an entire person being created through quantum fluctuations is still possible, we're not discussing that. 
Without a body and most likely being created in the vacuum of space, this brain would die almost instantly. But this brain was conscious before it died, so it fully believed that it was just a normal human being on this earth living a normal life and would probably be very confused on why reality just disintegrated and they died. I need to emphasize just how unlikely this is for even just an atom, any atom, to be created through quantum fluctuations is highly unlikely. For a Boltzmann brain to appear, you'd need the perfect amount of each type of atom that's used to create a brain. There are over 100 trillion atoms in an average cell, and there are about 100 billion cells in our brain. And not to mention that neuron cells, which make up the majority of our brain, are a lot more complex than your average cell. That's a lot of hydrogen, nitrogen, phosphate, carbon, and whatever elements are in our brain to make. Then we have to cross our fingers that they're all in the correct exact position to actually be a brain and not a soup of atoms. And finally, we have to hope that the memories that are in this brain will actually make sense and not just be a garbled mess. This means that the amount of time for a Boltzmann brain to appear in a vacuum is approximately 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 50 years. That number is stupid large. It's so big that its exponent needs an exponent. It is unfathomably high. To put it in perspective, 10 to the 50 years, which is just the exponent, is like if you were to count the stars in the universe, but in between each star, you counted all the grains of sand on Earth, but in between each grain of sand on Earth, you took a break that is as long as the current age of the universe. That ridiculously large number of years is just the number of zeros behind the number of years it would take for a Boltzmann brain to appear in a vacuum. However, considering quantum fluctuations will still happen after the heat death of the universe, with infinite space and time, probability becomes less if it will happen and more how many times will it happen. Now that we have the definition out of the way, let's move on to the implications of the Boltzmann brain. Before I talk about that, I want to address something. I am aware that the explanation I am giving is assuming that the universe is a Minkowski space. However, most quantum physicists believe that our universe is not a Minkowski space, but rather a de Sitter space with a positive cosmological constant, meaning that a Boltzmann brain wouldn't be created through quantum fluctuation, but rather thermal fluctuation, generally involving nucleation, which would take even longer. If you're an average viewer and you didn't understand what I just said, don't worry, because I didn't either. Just know that it's more likely that the number of years it would take for a Boltzmann brain to appear probably isn't 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 50, but rather even longer at 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 69. All the implications of Boltzmann brains stem from the fact that it has its own consciousness and lives in a false reality within its memory. Without sensory organs, Boltzmann brains have no way of knowing that they are actually floating in space. And by that logic, we have no way of knowing that we aren't floating in space. It's impossible to test whether or not you're a real brain or a Boltzmann brain, so the best we can really do is just hope. But there's always going to be that tiny chance that one day you will suddenly lose all your senses, realize every single part of your life was a lie, and die. Luckily, the chance of that happening is unimaginably low, based on the number I gave you before. Or so we thought. The universe is going to be around for an infinite amount of time, and as we learned in elementary school, infinity times anything, besides zero, is always going to be infinity. So, even with the minuscule chance of creating a Boltzmann brain, there will inevitably be more Boltzmann brains in this universe than real ones. For every single real brain in the universe, there will be an infinite amount of Boltzmann brains, meaning that the chance of you being a Boltzmann brain suddenly goes from almost impossible to almost certain. But again, as with anything as complicated as quantum physics, it's not even that simple. Boltzmann brains are an extremely meta subject. If you even try to think about it, your mind is going to explode just trying to wrap your head around all the implications. So knowing that, here's an argument that directly contradicts my previous one. You're welcome for confusing you even more. First of all, Boltzmann brains can't interact with each other. So that means that if you are a Boltzmann brain, everyone else on Earth is going to be fake, a figment of your imagination. Of course, I know that that's incorrect, because I can guarantee that I am real. So I know that you're not a Boltzmann brain, but if I am a Boltzmann brain, that means that you are fake, but you can guarantee that you are real. So there's no way that I am a Boltzmann brain. I hope you see what I'm getting at here. 
because trying to explain this concept without using an example is making my mind explode just trying to write it. There's another problem with the notion that we could all be Boltzmann brains. If someone here was a Boltzmann brain, they'd wake up in a completely new universe that isn't guaranteed to even follow the same fundamental laws of our universe. To argue that there will be an infinite amount of Boltzmann brains in our universe means that it's statistically certain that we're all Boltzmann brains is a dumb argument, because again, Boltzmann brains don't wake up in this universe. They'll wake up in a universe where nothing is guaranteed to be the same. And maybe in that universe, their different laws of physics may not even allow for Boltzmann brains to exist in the first place. I don't disagree that in our universe, Boltzmann brains will inevitably outnumber real ones. I'm certain that our universe is going to end up creating more brains through quantum fluctuation than through evolution. But when it comes to deciding whether we are Boltzmann brains or not, is an extremely complicated question that more likely than not, humanity will never know the answer to. It would be a lot simpler, and maybe even more likely, that we somehow beat the infinite odds stacked against us and all somehow avoided being Boltzmann brains, and were instead created as living, breathing, and most importantly, actually existing human beings. To all the infinitely many souls who weren't so lucky and ended up dying moments after being created through quantum fluctuation, I am very sorry. But in a universe where infinite time and space allow for anything to be possible, maybe it's just possible for us to be real. I'm Copacat, and this has been my incomprehensible rant about quantum physics. And he got bitten by a radioactive man Now he's dolphin man, half dolphin, half man Hear him screech at night, cause he just wants a friend He'll be quite a fright, Jesus Christ. if you run into him In the dark abandoned house where he lives Oh, you know he may come off strong, but he's not what he seems If he ever catches you, you can bet that you'll scream like hell let me go, hell, let me go, hell, let me go, let me go tonight, you'll scream hell, let me go, hell, let me go, hell, let me go, stop kidnapping me, she was just a lady, not a care in the world, till she saw some grown men, grown men. kidnapping me.